Hi, I'm Lori Gibbons, Vice President for Quality Improvement and Patient Safety at the South Carolina Hospital Association. We've identified a way to address a widespread problem across our nation and also throughout South Carolina hospitals of having mislabeled lab specimens. We are excited that we have, we think we've come up with some best practices that all of our hospitals in South Carolina can use to improve this. Well, the impetus uh, for moving forward with this process was really to improve outcomes for patients. And we had had an, an, an issue of long standing with staff where, you know, they were mislabeling, they weren't following the process. Um, after looking at ways to fix it, we, can, we put red rules in place. Unfortunately, that was not the answer at our institution. When it first came out, because we had so many issues with mislabels and other stuff too, I thought it was a good idea. Um, but then I got the sense that it kept some people from, if they knew they had made a mistake, wanting to report it because they were scared of the punitive end of it. I think the red rule was not the right answer. Just by whacking somebody for not doing the right thing doesn't really get to the root cause. You know, we have to look at why did this happen and you know, did we put the employee in a safe situation? Did, we ha did the employee have a workable system and a doable system? And that's kind of what we have to focus on instead of just whacking the employee for making an error. Usually when you have a problem, it's not because you have people who don't want to do the right thing. It's just that there's something maybe in the system that gets in the way or maybe we don't have a good process. And trying to put together a solution for how we could get our staff to understand the risk they were taking and to make something simple that they could do. We, we identified immediately several problems. We identified that we had multiple policies and procedures in place. For the one policy, it was um, name and medical record number, which was a nine digit. Um, so that um, was kind of, in, in my opinion, kind of unreasonable because um, you can very well get numbers mixed up, start seeing numbers that really aren't there. So the red rule drives information underground. We don't really learn what we need to learn. And to some extent, it says to the, the nurse and the phlebotomist, you're going to be held accountable just for the outcome. You figure out how to not mislabel a specimen. And I think that's the fatal flaw. It's dangerous. It's, it's not just for the phlebotomist and the nurse, and it's dangerous for the patient. What we really need to do is to say to the phlebotomist and the nurse, here's, here's how you don't mislabel a specimen. And here's the rules we're going to hold you accountable to, even before you've mislabeled a specimen. We're going to say, if you don't file this rule, there will be consequences. But then design the rule with the notion that human beings can reasonably follow it and minimally be minimally intrusive. Don't create a rule that says every time you do this, you have to confirm both the account number and the medical record number. It's just not reasonable. Could they possibly do it? Yes. But are they going to do it in practice? The answer is no. One of the lessons is that all staff in the hospital are engaged in patient safety um, and you just have to make our processes reasonable and timely and that will keep people from, from developing a sidestep. Now, how are we going to in intervene in a way that minimizes you doing your nursing practice but maximizes our ability to keep the patient safe. And that's what led us to the last three digits of the medical record number post-labeling. We said if you can do this small step, and you'll see it in the video, if you can do this small step, we can get a 98% reduction in the mislabeled specimens that get to the floor. We decided that we were going to lead the solution for our state. I think this new idea is great. I think we should have done it a long time ago. I think it's easy, easy to remember, quick. We thought that the intervention was so simple uh, that it could be communicated in, in a very effective way. So three numbers can save my life. The final check, say it out loud, that is check the final three numbers in the medical record say it out loud, which is another way of, of getting uh, that double check done with the individual. It's simple. The new procedure is this. Okay, One, just check your ID here. confirm the name. David Mark. Two, confirm the date of birth. Birthday is 8-8-1965? Yes. Okay. Draw the blood specimen. 
In the third and final step, verify the last three numbers of the medical record number from the armband to the blood specimen labels and say them out loud. Okay, I'm just gonna check your armband to these specimens. 387, 387, 387, 387. Okay. That's it. Okay, Mr. Scott, I'm just gonna confirm that we have met the book the label of one three four. One three four. Okay. Yes, if we can do it, anyone can do it. I've worked at a few other EDs. This ED is by far the busiest I've ever worked in. I mean, it's working. I think it's great. And as you, as you scroll across the Excel spreadsheet and you see low numbers, and, and for them to be where they are right now, I mean, I think that's phenomenal. The last three months, we have had mislabels, but they have been on urines. There has not been a single mislabeled lab blood draw from the ED. So to now be able to go back to the staff and say, if you do the final check, it will work. I can show them in numbers that if, they're if they are doing what we've asked them to do, they're eliminating the mislabeled specimens. So please join us in doing the final check. If it doesn't match, raise your hand and report.